Remote support. We all need it. Things don't always go according to plan and we need the experts to come in and help us fix the problems. TeamViewer. Been around forever, but right now, it's not what I would use anymore. So let me, James Gardner, the Senior Tech Geek, go through the current options and the best options and the most cost-effective options for allowing people to remotely support your solution cinemas or if you're any other business, even your desktops, anything to do with remote support. This is a fantastic tool. It's a free tool um, and it works pretty much just as well as TeamViewer. So let's have a quick look. Um, I'll get, get back on the screen here. This is good old TeamViewer for Windows. Very common, we've all had it, we've been using it for years. I no longer use it at all. I used to be an avid user of it, but um, I basically used to use it probably once or twice a month um, for a long time. And they've decided that I must be using it commercially. So if I wanna use it that twice a month sort of time frame, it's $50 a month, it's $25 every time I wanna just pop in and control someone's computer for a few minutes. No thank you, goodbye TeamViewer. So what's the options? Well, I'm gonna show you two options today. Um, there's the one option which I mainly uh, will show you is um, this one. Is, um, let's get here, Rust, it's called Rust Desk. Um, it's called that because it's written in the Rust language, which is a new language which is specifically designed to um, make very robust and security uh, aware software. A lot of security software has been rewritten in Rust because the way it's it's implemented makes it very, very hard for um, memory overruns, etc., to happen, which leads to the p ability for people to hack into things, etc. So it's been written in that language, so it's very secure, it's very good. It works on, um, you can see all down here, Windows, Apple, uh, Linux, which is fantastic because I'm a Linux man and I use it to control my Linux and I find it to be the best Linux control tool there is. It'll also allow you to control Amazon, um, Android tablets or phones and iOS tablets or phones if you want to as well. I haven't really used that part of it, but that sounds fantastic too. But anyway, so let's have a look at it. I'll just bring it up here. So it's a little bit like um, TeamViewer. You have this um, your ID number here if someone wants to control you and you can set your password here um, and you can edit it if you want or um, you can just go over the eye and you can tell someone what that password is. Now um, you can also connect and transfer files to a machine. Um, when you do you'll then get the machines popping up here so it's easy to click, click connect on them connect to them later on and you can rename them if you want to make them easier to remember etc. So we're going to um, for example we're going to connect, connect to my MacBook my development platform. So this has popped up on another screen, the password, but let's do that. So there you go. There's my Mac. There it is. It's the one I do all my coding on. Uh, just sitting there waiting for me to um, to kick up my development environment again. The only problem with Mac currently is that it does not run as a service. And so if you want to control the Mac, you actually have to run Rust Desk and leave it going in the background, right? Um, um, yeah. Now, um, just a, a word on this. Um, I do find when you're controlling stuff in other parts of the world where the connections are quite iffy, you'll get a lot of tearing and it may not, the connection may not be great, but it's good enough to typically get you by. But if you do have um, a good connection, like you can see here, it works plenty fine to get away with anything you want and it's actually quite fast. Um, and you, you can stretch it and original size and all that sort of stuff to make it easier to use on that particular machine. Um, you've also got a little tool over here. The nice thing about it as well is that if you are doing remote support for someone and say, I've got need help, need help, what do I do, what do I do? You get them to download Rust Desks from the site. It's a small download. They run the tool. It comes up straight away with this window that you can see here. And it's just a single use run. You t they tell you the, nu the number and you type it in, you say connect. It'll pop up on their screen as someone's trying to connect to them which is obviously you because you just connected to them and they can connect okay and let you straight in, no password needed all on the phone. So it makes it easier that way. Um, uh, so yeah, but if you want to, you can then hit a button to install it permanently. So let's, let's just have a look at some of the options there. So if I'm running this here, 
I can enable the service on Windows so it runs in the background. So if it reboots or anything, as long uh, it's it's always running, you just can connect to it whenever you want. So if you've know the connection number and you've got to know the password, you can connect to that machine from anywhere, anytime you want, right? Which is you know what you want if you're doing remote support of machines in remote locations, which don't really have for users. You're just doing everything remotely. Perfect for that. You can actually can uh, enable direct IP access, and that works very good in some way. So I can actually type the IP address up here instead of the special number. So it's not going through the servers. It's just going from Rust desk, Rust desk to Rust desk directly. And I actually find it runs better, more and faster if you do it that way as well. Um, so that's really good too. If you've got your own VPN internal network and you can connect to everything directly, you can use that instead and not have to use the uh, satellite servers out on the net internet to bounce the connections through. Um, so yeah, that's uh, some of the um, really nice features I've oh, got whitelist and whitelisting and if you can have actually install your own server uh, uh, if you want so it's a lot faster there are public servers and that's what comes by default when you're using it for free um, and there's more work being done on those but you can actually buy your own server uh, and and host it yourself if you really want to and there's probably more features coming with that I'm not really sure you need to look at the rust desk and the developer and what he's getting up to but uh, there's a lot of promise there with that sort of stuff but for right now if you just want to remote support someone man this this rocks right so um, so some more examples um, let's connect to my Linux desktop instead this is great Remote desktop on Linux is a real bugger to set up. This is, you just get the the deb file that you install on Linux, you install it. It just worked for me. Very, very happy. The only limitation is you, you technically wise, you have to run the X11 interface and not the Wayland interface. If you don't understand that, just the X, X11 is pretty much default still. It doesn't really matter. But as you can see here, um, I've got you know it works perfectly for Linux as well and Linux I'm a very big Linux person I actually work at this machine most of the time when I'm doing my support and emails and other bits and pieces because Linux is where I, I like to live um, uh, so yeah that's Linux and let's also have a look there's one other tool I wanted to show you Rust Desk is great an amazing tool but there's also another tool which that you may want to use which I use occasionally and that's tools called um, where is it? I'll just get it up here. Here it is here. It's called Parsec, right? Um, now it's much limit. You can't set up a lot of connections to a lot of machines because they want you to buy that service. But if you just want to connect to one particular machine for a particular high performance purpose, um, that's where Par Parsec comes into action. Both machines need to have high powered graphics cards because it uses those graphics cards to um, actually run the, the, the control of the machines, right? So I'll just close these windows. Oh, I've got a lot of things going here. This is at home. This is my machine at home. So you'll notice here that, um, I'll just make the window bigger. Now, You'll see here that it, it basically runs like it's running locally. So Parsec uses those tools or the technology like when people are playing Stadia or those uh, games they're playing on their, their small device and it's running in the cloud and it sends it to the people using these hardware accelerated video encoding and decoding tools. And that what pa that's what Parsec does. That's why you need these high performance graphics cards in your machines to do it, which isn't really great for a support agent because a lot of these machines don't have high performance graphics cards. And also Parsec's quite expensive to use if you want to actually expand it to a work group or to a lot of locations. Because the rare, where it goes well is if I want to do remote um, editing with Premiere or Resolve, I can do that remotely using Parsec to the machine in the office and it's similar to running it as if I'm sitting in the office machine myself. So that's very useful if you need to do any sort of that sort of material. Like if you, you might have a machine in the office where you do making of your pre-show tools, etc., and you're using Resolve because it's very cost effective and it exports DCPs, uh, but, but, you don't have, but you're at home on your laptop and you still need to do the work, you can Parsec in, do it, do it from your from your desk at home in front of the television 
fantastic tool for that. But if you want to go to anything, anywhere, uh, and easy to make it so you can log into someone for support, that's where um, Rust Desk really kicks goals and why I've left everything else behind. I don't use um, TeamViewer anymore, not with Rust Desk around. But anyway, I hope this really helps you out in terms of getting remote support for your cinemas or anything that you need to remote support for, even just doing your emails, setting up your emails, doing anything technical, um, allowing uh, you know, the right person to get in at the right time very easily can save us a lot of money and time and grief because time is money and getting it quick fast, getting it fixed fast is a big deal. So please, you know, I welcome you to have give it a go, uh, rustdesk.com um, and good luck uh, with Christmas period and makes, let's make some money now we're coming out of the crisis. Bye for now, James Gardner, Syntech Geek.